Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 1400, written by King Curly. I prevented the zombie apocalypse with ranch dressing. A few weeks before my brother's birthday in June, I had a dream about us at a restaurant, celebrating with family. In the dream, I got these buffalo chicken waffle fries. The waitress asked if I want the ranch dressing on or in a cup. I ordered the fries, and a few moments later, three men stormed through the door and started ravaging people, biting necks and blood everywhere. Dream ends. Fast forward to my brother's birthday. We sat down at a restaurant with the family. I looked at the menu and realized I'm about to order the buffalo chicken waffle fries. Cute déjà vu feeling. I looked at my brother and tell him this is the exact situation, exact place and time as my dream. The waitress gets to me and I order the fries. She asks, ranch on or off? I tell my brother, if I order the ranch on these, I start the zombie apocalypse. I think for a second and order it off in a cup. Afterwards, I look back at him and tell him if I'm right, three guys will walk in, but not be zombies. I turn around and crap you not, three men walk in like normal. The pure shock on my brothers and family's faces was uncanny. So yeah, dreams are not coincidences. And also ranch is more powerful than we know. Case notes are file 1400. I prevented the zombie apocalypse with ranch dressing. So I think dreams can include additional information about our environment and yes, decoded by your subconscious. And this can include even information from the future. You can think of it as the subconscious being the CPU, and our conscious mind being the monitor, at least in part. Subconscious is processing information, decoding it, organizing it, and then it's fed into this conscious mind where you perceive it like a screen. I think the conscious mind does more than just see, but it's a large part of what it does is to enable our experience of reality, or dreams in this case. Now that said, I don't think that the decoding process is perfect. There can be anomalies or fantastical embellishments, such as in the case with zombies. <laughs> so I don't think if you had ordered the ranch normally that there would have been actual zombies. Maybe the people would have been violent. Maybe it would somehow signal a crossing of a universe into where those three men enter and they're just taken over by rabies or something. <laughs> Very unlikely, but still possible. Unlikely in my view that it would be real zombies, but I guess who knows. Best to prepare ourselves just in case. <laughs> And hey, maybe it's not silver or decapitation that we need, we just need ranch dressing. That is the real enemy of zombies. You learn something new every day, huh? <laughs> Case file number 1401, written by Anonymous. The fire that revived itself. Had just finished middle school and had a sleepover with a friend. Their parents set up a tent in the yard, maybe 10 feet from the front door, and huge patio windows. And we had a fire. It was in the front of the opening of the tent. They stayed with us for a while before going inside, but they left us a pretty big bucket of water, big enough to sufficiently soak everything in the small pot fire. My friend and I get tired, drench the fire, again, everything soaked entirely, and get in the tent. A couple minutes later, it begins to rain pretty hard, lasts about 10 minutes, and I'm dozing off. Not entirely gone, but in that semi-conscious way. My friend isn't far behind, and then I hear her say my name, in a tone that told me she was alarmed, but calm, but this doesn't entirely compute. I asked, what, in a semi-irritated tone, cause I'm trying to sleep here, and she goes, the fire is back on. I stayed laying there for a second before it registered, but my sleepy brain made the calculations pretty quick. We drenched that fire, and it rained after. Someone started the fire back up. I'm suddenly wide awake. I bolt up and scramble out of the tent, immediately circle it in case someone was going to attack us coming out, start scanning the tree line about 50 feet back, see nothing, but again it's dark. My friend is frantically looking around too. I can see enough since the porch light was on and the fire that's now roaring like we never put it out. Keep in mind we're like 13. I'm keeping as calm as I can despite the adrenaline coursing through me and fighting the instinct to run inside. But now, of course, we have to put this fire out again. The big bucket is empty, which proved to me I didn't hallucinate the whole thing, and the ground was still wet. 
so I tell my friend to go inside and fill it up and I'll stay outside and watch. Probably not the best decision at the time, but my thinking was there were too many blind spots if I went back inside. Longest 5 minutes of my life. She comes back out, puts out the fire, and we take turns getting our valuables out of the tent while the other watches, and retreat back into the house. Given the house had a crap ton of windows and sliding glass doors, I didn't sleep well that night. We never saw anyone, and heard nothing after. I don't know if it was an actual person that somehow escaped both of our notice. It wasn't my friend, because I would have felt her get up, heard the zipper, etc. Maybe it was some freak of nature, but I swear up and down that fire was out. Quesantifal 1401 The Fire That Revived Itself I think this is a pure case of temporal reset, but only in the very small, local area surrounding the fire itself. It had to be a temporal reset before it started to rain, because no human could have restarted the fire otherwise, at least not unless they brought their own dry wood and kindling. I've tried to start fires countless times when camping and it just doesn't work if the wood and ground is wet. The water steals too much thermal energy to get a good spark and then fire going from it. You definitely need dryness for that to happen. There's no possible way I can think of that it would restart itself after being doused with water from a bucket and then being rained on too. And I don't think it was some external threat either. I think it was just a temporal anomaly. And it's not too far-fetched for what we know about space-time portals. I guess it was just a time-based portal in this case. Focus more on time. Maybe the fire pit actually itself moved slightly as well, but the primary movement was in time. Case file number 1402, written by Fantasy Footage. There's a reason my rent is so cheap. When I lived in my old apartment in the Midwest, the rent was unbelievably cheap for the size. Two spacious rooms and a bathroom for less than $1,000 a month. Most days, life went on as usual, but there was one incident that still baffles me to this day. It was a sunny afternoon, and I decided to tackle the ever-growing pile of dishes in the sink. I reached for the blue dish soap, a familiar container, and as I was about to use it, something inexplicable happened. The bottle vanished into thin air right before my eyes. I couldn't believe it. I stood there, staring at the empty spot on the counter where the blue bottle had just been a moment ago. I checked the immediate surroundings, thinking maybe it had fallen or rolled away, but it was nowhere to be found. Puzzled and somewhat frustrated, I searched the entire apartment, even places where the bottle had no reason to be, but it had seemingly disappeared from existence. Defeated and utterly perplexed, I returned to the kitchen and glanced back at the sink, and there it was, as if nothing had ever happened. The blue dish soap bottle, neatly placed next to the sink. My mind raced with confusion and disbelief. Had I imagined the entire incident? Or had I experienced a brief glitch in the fabric of reality? The strangest part was that it wasn't just the bottle that had vanished. It was as if the memory of it had vanished too, leaving me questioning if I had run out of soap or forgotten to buy more, even though I was certain it was supposed to be there all along. It felt like a surreal moment, where the boundaries of reality blurred, leaving me with a lingering sense that perhaps there are aspects of our world that defy logic and reason, hidden just beneath the surface of our everyday lives. Case notes are file 1402. There's a reason my rent is so cheap hidden beneath the surface of our everyday lives. Yep, a succinct way to put it. The memory starting to fade sort of reminds me of Back to the Future, where the very photograph image of himself starts to be erased as if it never happened, as if he never existed. Temporal paradoxes definitely are a head scratcher. So in my mind, this sounds like a developer in the real world of the simulation noticed the error and tried to correct it, even in your own memory. Although, I guess that's not so simple to do. And now time for the quote of the day. We are indeed much more than what we eat, but what we eat can nevertheless help us to be much more than what we are. Adele Davis. Yeah, that simple adage of you are what you eat. Kind of true, but it's much more than just that. Of course, if you eat healthy food, whole foods is the key. Generally whole foods. But you know, <laughs> I'm not a stickler to that. I think the key is to not be overweight. If you're overweight, there's a lot of health issues that come along with that. And the key to me is just walking more. 
still want to enjoy delicious foods. Uh, <laughs> there's so many good foods out there. Pastries are my weakness. Donuts and turnovers and puff pastries filled with raspberry jam or whatever it is. Oh my, that sounds pretty good right now. It doesn't mean you can never eat delicious junk food like that. It just shouldn't be the bulk of your diet if that's all you're eating. Probably not going to end well for you. So incorporate a lot of whole foods in it, you know, lean meats, fish, vegetables, fruits, legumes, all that good stuff. You'll be full without eating as many calories, and if you walk as well in addition to that, you'll definitely lose weight if that's a goal of yours. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony, signing off.